What's going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Coffee Break. We're in season two and we have a special guest today. I'm pretty excited about what's a coffee break without a cup of coffee. So let's just do that first. Mm. Let's get into it. So here we are with our special guest and um this is Evelise <laughs> Evelise Lopez she is my wife so this one's gonna be an interesting one <laughs> yeah how, how are you ready? how are you <laughs> I'm good good so I wanted to start off the new season right and since the full theme of the the season is gonna be celebrating people I thought it would be so cool to just start off um, the celebration with my wife. Not only is she gonna give birth pretty soon to my son, um, but we're pretty excited and and um, I wanted to uh, I'll start this off right. And not only is she my wife, but she's an educator, right? Like you, mm -hmm. you've been with the Board of Education for what, like how many years already? Well, that doesn't work that way. <laughs> you can be an educator once you are Just doing. Good. Graduation, yeah. I did birth to three, um, early intervention. You can do tutoring. Um, there's different aspects of being a teacher or an educator. Um, but in the Board of Ed, I think it's already been at least seven years in the school system. Seven years. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty long time. So you have probably seen a lot of stories, right? Yeah. And um, um, what made me also want to interview you and talk about education was because, you know, prior to COVID, like, how how was education, like, for you in these seven years? Let's say, like, so don't think about COVID. Just how have they okay. been? Um, I always enjoyed being a teacher. Um, I did volunteer work as a teenager in the church or helping out families in the neighborhood, babysitting. And I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do um, for the rest of my life in any aspect. I tried um, younger kids, older, um, a little bit of everything. We worked in the youth for church and I was like, this is something I really want to do and I enjoyed doing. Um, it didn't matter pay. I didn't even think about that. Um, I just wanted to make an impact on children in any way, shape or form, whether it was math or science or just being someone that was a person who was actually listening to them that can help them some kids come from broken homes and it's just like a little bit of everything but i i did i enjoyed my job but being a teacher or any part of education you gotta love it yeah. and i always say if you don't love it then it's better that you step away yeah. <laughs> um, because you do give a part of who you are um, and it is a lot of work um, in different aspects. Yeah. So, so. They, so I'm pretty sure this, the, the seven years of education for you, has, they have been good years because it's something that you okay. love, so it makes it a little bit easier for you to like actually like give well, your it's, all. It's, yeah, it's been longer than seven years. Oh. I've done it since I was like 20, so okay. and I'm already 35. Yeah. It's over 10 years I've been over an educator. 10 years. Mm -hmm. So then now, right, now we get into the... COVID part now, mm -hmm. which is what we're living in now. And the I last thought, two yeah, years. the last two years. And I wanted to touch on this because I know there's been so much like spark on the news and stuff with education, teachers leaving, um, mm -hmm. teachers uh, 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 having a shortage of, of staff and, and whatnot. So now, like, how has education been for you these past two years dealing with the whole pandemic? That's like a a big question <laughs> it's a big question because when the pandemic first started i was in a different school system okay. and i had younger children and we weren't expecting it to go the way that it did um i didn't realize the whole world was going to change um my students are special needs and i wasn't sure how they were going to receive their services or how it was gonna benefit them being at home all day. Um, I thought of like every aspect. It made me nervous because my husband being a techie <laughs> and all these aspects and I 
never thought that I actually had to put my foot forward in that aspect to learn how to use a Chromebook and Microsoft Teams and Google Classroom and so things like learning knew. curve. Yeah, like for me, I was stressed out because I'm like, you know, I think I'm a good teacher, but then I didn't feel that I was gonna be giving my best because I didn't even know what to do. And then you have like these families and these children that are kind of like looking at you. And I know that, you know, the world kind of said, oh my God, I appreciate teachers so much now because all their kids were home and behaviors showed up and then they realized everything that encompassed what it is to teach and that's one or maybe a few kids if you have in the home and not a whole classroom of 20, 25. And people were being appreciative because they saw that it is, it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of patience, it takes a lot of time. Um, and teachers kind of felt like they were seen and they were like, okay, that it made us feel good because we were all stressed out. The best of the best teachers were stressed out. Mm. If the teacher wasn't stressed out, then they didn't love their job. That's how that's mm. how I see it. So if they were like, yeah, I love it, whatever, and they didn't sign in and didn't communicate with families, that to me, then you shouldn't call yourself an educator. That's a personal opinion. Because mm -hmm. um, it's your job and you have lives at stake. Mm. Um, so I stressed out, you saw me. There was days that I cried because yeah things weren't working. Um, I have special needs kids and some of them weren't logging on. And then I just felt like, where are we going in the world? Like, how's this gonna affect these kids or the kids before? Um, so I was I was stressed out <laughs> for, for the pandemic. Then once I got a hold of how everything was working and what worked for me and my students and my families, then I felt better. Um, and we did the best that we could under all the circumstances. Then once they started weaning back into the school system, you know, part-time here. But as a special education teacher, we had to be full-time because kids um, need services like speech, occupational therapy, special education. So if they're missing that, it's harder. And we, they're already be, like behind, yeah. quote unquote. Um, so when we went back into the school, it felt good. <laughs> Cause it's like, ah, oh, you're in person, but it was still, you know, you're a little bit nervous. We still didn't know how it was affecting people um, physically and people were passing away yeah. and it was still scary. Um, but I think the school may do the best way that they knew how. And I do give it props cause it didn't completely fall apart. And yeah. that was the first year. Yeah. So I give, you know, whoever was kind of making, I felt like they were doing you know, they were doing okay. So you know. now you said about like, you, you're not only worrying about the kids, but you're also dealing yeah. with families too, mm -hmm. right? You're dealing with the, the parents or if they're single moms or single dads or whatever, right? Guardians, yeah. So throughout the whole, you know, year, the beginning of the pandemic, they, you had like, not only to deal with the kids, but deal with the parents that, that were working, mm -hmm. right? So how, how did you how did you feel about like you know a parent talking to you and letting you know oh. like okay my son they have to do remote learning but i have you know i have to work right so yeah. how, how did you like how do you feel was the best way you navigated through through that space that, 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 that's a really good question um in the world of special education you have to work with all types of people so you have to be prepared to be <laughs> be ready for anything that's thrown at you. So at least I had experience prior. If that was my first year of teaching, I probably would have like had a, a breakdown. But I felt like I had enough enough experience. I I already built a rapport with those parents because it wasn't in the beginning of the school year. It was around you know February March. So we had at least already a few months to build those relationships with parents and kind of know the families. A little bit more so um, I think it was awkward to be teaching and not knowing like who was listening to you or if they thought you were doing a good job like you felt like you were also being critiqued by parents and families because they were like you know like oh hi miss so-and-so and you're like hi and you can hear stuff in the background. And that was like a whole entity in itself. Now you're in the homes of these children. Yeah. So like there's that barrier that when you come into the school, you may not know 
everything that's going on in the child's home. Um, but now we're in the yeah. child's home. Yeah. Whether they show the camera or not, you can still hear if people are yelling, if people are not paying attention, if they're by themselves, if they're with a bigger family. So the lines are being crossed. Mm. And I think that's what Cause made, now that's almost like in like pro you're invading like an yeah, invasion in of the prop same way to the privacy right? yeah and ours like we right. it was just me and you and you were in your space working and I was in my space working but there's other teachers who have they had their kids at right, home right. and maybe elderly parents that they were taking care of and so I think since the lines were kind of getting blurred I think from there it made education kind of tricky for the year that came after mm. because I think everybody thought that they had the right to like I don't know I'm thinking it in Spanish <laughs> sorry like um ser entrometido how do you say oh like um yeah I, I get what you're saying <laughs> let's, let's see for, for my viewers out there. <laughs> yeah like to be like there were some parents or guardians who felt like they could tell the teachers what like they, butting in like you just feel yeah. like you don't want to butt in and I'm not saying every teacher or educator is perfect or the best I'm but there's no perfect doctor, there's yeah, no perfect yeah, yeah. Um, president. There's Everybody has a flaw. And yes, there's stories, crazy stories. And yeah. I always feel like embarrassed yeah. because like when they talk about teachers, mm -hmm. you know, sorry, but sleeping with kids or mm -hmm. hurting kids or neglecting them or not teaching at all, that looks bad on any other teacher who's trying to do a good job. Because yeah. then it taints that viewpoint of yeah. other people. And once you have a bad you know apple they say the bad yeah. apple ruins the bunch yeah. then people look at educators in a different light and then people want to take charge then they yeah. want to tell you how to do your job or yeah. what you should be doing but and i don't have a problem working with the families i think that's what you said like building that relationship i enjoy that i think we're a team yeah. like if we have one child the same way that a child outside is being cultivated by your community, whether friends, family, your neighbors, and you're building up and raising that child up together, it's the same in the education system. Mm. The principal, the, the PPT meetings, the teachers, the parents, the guardians, older siblings, however it works, we're there for the best of that child, that student. So we have to learn how to communicate. We have to understand each other. We have to work together yeah. and that's always been one of my strong points coming from other people. They've always told me that and I was always nervous. So when I hear compliments on that, I go, oh, okay, then I'm doing a good job. Yeah. And so that never, it was never an issue for me when we had to do that. Other teachers and other schools and kids, they had crazy stories, but I always had a good rapport mm -hmm. and that was not yeah. a concern, uh, I guess, on my end. That, that, that's good. And it's good information and, and it, like I, I there's like so many reasons why I wanted to do this interview and, and do the interview with you and touch on the topic of education because you know we have spoken about you know education on, on different levels mm -hmm. but also um, the, the the fact that teachers don't get celebrated as they, they should I'm just using the word celebration yeah. because of but I'm but I'm meaning that they don't get recognized like they should. Like I think teachers are like at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to even, um, um, how do you say, like corporate America or or in the hierarchy of mm -hmm. of who gets paid the most and whatever. But oh, and yeah. then now you look at the hierarchy, you see what they do, and then you look at the teachers that supposedly they're like at the bottom of the totem pole, and you see what they do, mm -hmm. and it's almost like twenty four seven type of thing. I'm Correct. not disregarding any other uh, any other positions or jobs, mm -hmm. but for the for the fact that, you know, I see you bring work home. I see you, you know, working with teachers, working with parents, working with the kids, and now almost like you're almost becoming like a tech person because you had to automatically th thank God, but let's say if I wasn't a techie person mm -hmm. and you had to like kind of like figure things on your oh, own yeah. that it would have been like crazy. Um, to just like have to learn these new systems and and whatever mm -hmm. So I just feel like just in general teachers don't get like the props that they should be getting um, And now is beginning to show at least for me more like how much education is needed 
like when you read all the articles and the articles you send me and stuff i'm like dude you see like mm -hmm. this gotta bring a light right yeah. to the to the people so when 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 you look at yourself now you look at yourself from where you've come mm -hmm. and what you're dealing with now right like what what is like something that that you feel can can be a little bit better or, or that you you like like can be like um not saying you're gonna give all the so you know all the, like the solutions are gonna be right just in general in the yeah, ju just in general in the oh, okay. educational system right like wh what do you think is missing in the system that could kind of make it slightly a little bit better is it maybe the dynamic between the teachers and and the the ones above or is it you know there's like a couple of i know there's a couple of yeah. like it's like a uh, it's feel i feel so bad saying this but it's like it's just a trickle effect we we learned you know like head of household or just like when someone's in charge it starts from the top and it can trickle to the bottom mm -hmm. in a positive or a negative way mm -hmm. um there's that show you know where like the boss disguising themselves oh, yeah, so they yeah. can see what their employees are doing and really appreciate what they're helping for their company and i honestly would love that <laughs> i would love that idea for a superintendent or anybody who's making laws on education who hasn't been in the classroom ever or in years to come down quote unquote mm. to our level and to see what we're really dealing with a lot of there's just too too many assumptions mm. and no one's asking a teacher do you see interviews with teachers? No, it's everybody's point of view of what they think that we do or how we feel. And we don't have a right to complain. Oops, sorry, microphone. <laughs> and we don't have a, a right to complain. Right. And a, a lot of the complaints are not petty, they're valid. Um, Cause you see them, you're, you're like, they're living well, I'm, it. I'm living yeah. it. Yeah. So maybe some people do it too often and then that gets annoying, which, it is, you know, like if you complain and you're not trying to do anything different, then yeah, it does get annoying. But there's only so much we can do. Yeah. Um, but the assumptions, I, I just, I don't like it. Don't generalize, just don't do that to every teacher. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think it's in like the Midwest or the South where their pay is a lot less than mine. So like, I feel like mine is a, a, a decent pay, but there's a lot of states where I didn't realize that they, they have very low income for a whole year. Mm. Um, and I'm like, how, is, how does that work? Where there's, the economy is, prices are rising for everything. Um, other places you could get a bonus, you can get overtime. Teachers don't get that. So there should be increments for that. So I think that's an issue because then those educators are not able to live on their income. Mm. If they're single, they have a second job. Mm. There's so many teachers with side hustles and second jobs. That is like that's not. I don't think. I mean, if they love to do their side job, it's different. But if it's because they can't afford their their home or food or groceries, that's sad. Yeah. And then people have stated, oh, it's like just a babysitting job. But <laughs> people have broken it down. A babysitter can make ten to even twenty dollars an hour. If I were to do the math. Mm -hmm times the amount of students, people should be getting paid more. Yeah. So we're like, take it easy, it's not even like that. So that's one thing. I think there's too much of a discrepancy in the salaries and there hasn't been yeah. any change in that. I don't know too much, so I'm not gonna touch too Over, much of Over time, right? You yeah. don't get overtime, No, right? we don't. So, so I think it's, that's what needs to be considered in the salary. And people are like, oh, but you have summers off. Yeah, that's always the, it seems like that's always that's, the excuse, right? Yeah, but we work our butts off. Yep every other time when we are doing it. So you know, if I get two months off to spend it. with my kids or whatever, um, and just to have a break mentally because people were, were constantly asked questions, it is nonstop. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell you like, no, I, I, I can't right now. There's kids who need extra help. So our preps, I don't even want to talk about yeah, yeah. I can go really deep, Yeah. but. That's good. But. <sighs> I'm going back to your question because I don't like to like sidetrack. I'm trying to do the teacher thing and, mm -hmm. and bring it back. But you asked like, what can improve? So I did talk about the equivalence of salary. You talked about uh, the boss the, for them, the, to, for them understand. to come down and see. Yeah, like, before they just make up these rules. I know we've come a long way when it comes to mental health. You know, we're in our 30s. 
I tell the teenagers that I work with now, you guys got it good in that sense that you guys are able to um, be, there's people that are more open-minded. You can discuss things that were very like taboo or hush-hush when mm. we were growing up. Um, and mental health was one of them. Um, I struggled with anxiety, but I wasn't allowed to really speak about it because not only in the Hispanic culture that you need to be tough, you need to be independent, you need to be mm. able to to make it through, um, but also in the Christianity, like if you had anxiety or depression or any of these emotions, it was like, is that the enemy or is it because you're weak or what's going on? And mm. you start to question your beliefs. Um, and you only went to therapy if it was something super serious. And then you have to look at your life and say, is it that severe compared to other people? And so a lot of it just gets brought down, brought down, brought down. And, you know, they make fun of millennials or whatever. But I think that's why they wanted to reemphasize these programs called Ruler that talks about expressing your emotions, um, expressing how you feel. And I think they're great programs. The intent is there. But then at the same time, when people go too far left, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no balance. Mm -hmm. And then we have lack of accountability for the, the kids. Now everybody is, it needs to be like more sensitive. You can't be too tough. There's not any consequences. We take away truancy. Truancy is when kids used to skip and we used to check on them. Now we don't, worry, worry, worry now we don't do that. Um, kids bringing in things to high school. No, we don't, mm, let's not talk about that. So I think the accountability, there's less and less of that every year I'm teaching. Oh, and, so, and, and that's even outside of the pandemic. You, you just felt like so many have, like even prior to, to pandemic, no. things were like that, or you think it's gotten worse no, now? No, I think it's gotten more intense. Oh, oh, I don't always say okay. um, worse. Intense because COVID showed What that was wrong? What, no, no, like people were at home and they were getting depressed oh. and anxiety was rising. Therapy was needed. So you got all these mental health issues arising because people can't do their every day. Mm. There, I can't spend time with my loved ones. Mm. People are dying. So a lot of that impact, which was necessary to discuss, affected everybody in some shape or form. Mm. But it, it impacted the education system in a little bit of a negative way that we only think about mental health and then people are taking advantage. Okay. And so now there's no consequences when there's things that are wrong or everything is like, it's okay, it's okay. and. Sometimes you need to be a little bit tough, mm. you know, like I had a, a friend of mine say we have like the the crystal generation She wanted to call them because they're so delicate like you're just trying to make fun or say something and they get Offended, okay, and I guess that it could be generational It is what it is, but like I Feel like you can't be too tough and you can't be too soft You know everybody needs a soft side and everybody needs to be tough that, too. that balance that balance and we're losing that mm. balance Okay, I'm not good. even including like social media. I'm just yeah. saying the mental health is important, but how it's being brought into the schools, I don't know if they're doing it in the best way possible. Okay, that that, that makes sense, and, and and those are good points to to touch on, and and to be honest, I think those are points that can actually that there could be a quick solution for them, and it's just by just trying to like apply them, especially the one with the like. Like you said, the superintendents or whatever coming down and playing like that role to just mm -hmm. see whatever. I think that'll be healing. Yeah. So if anybody's watching that, I actually challenge you or your school or whatever whatever school you're in. I challenge you to do something like that because if it's something that that can help, you know, a teacher. And I'm pretty sure teachers are going through so much right now. You know what I mean? Like, like everybody's the, doing extra. work. You know, work. everybody's mm -hmm. doing extra work. You know, it's it's like I'm, I'm not trying to put like one teacher. You know over another or whatever but i just that's why i said as a whole the educational system is not only was it getting hit before yeah. but it's getting hit even worse now correct and and for me it's such a crucial you know i a part of life you know education and mm -hmm. and you know you you got kids that that, that are growing up not learning certain things or whatever there, there's so many factors in it and education plays such a big role in our daily lives in society mm -hmm. that that i don't think it gets touched on the way it should get touched on and then now like you send me an article you know where we got 
teachers, teachers and leaving. leaving and then you got like like the army or something or the navy like jumping in or or, or like doing uh, there was an article i read about like the army's um um doing like volunteer work like volu becoming volunteer teachers and stuff like that from an article well, that I read. yeah there's no substitute there's no substitute no. and i'm like what the heck is going on so but, everybody complains but nobody wanted to like to help do out. something yeah so you yeah. know i i thought maybe hopefully this interview could get somewhere you know what i mean that that maybe it could touch somebody who's watching it you know that's in the board of ed that is a teacher or maybe that has some connection somehow or whatever and that if maybe we can work together a little bit more maybe not just one specific school but how about the schools in general come together and and like maybe you know that that was another thing i actually forgot it's like even within each state yep each school system like each town that's what right. i said is doing something different mm -hmm. and you would think that within at least the state we're all in, on the Unison. same doing the same thing because some you know we live in one town and then i'm teaching another that's a lot of teachers some teachers teach in the same town other ones don't right so like certain days off and certain rules for one yeah. and and it's just like so all over the place that yeah that's where you feel like you're going crazy and i feel like we when it came back to the mental health thing was they added on i think one or two days to the to the students you know being excused for certain absences you know mm -hmm. like if someone passes away or if there's like a medical concern but they add i think two days of mental health which i said that was a positive okay but they didn't do it to teacher yeah so the teacher who's getting all the stuff mm -hmm. too, I'm not saying give us like all these, but like you could add one extra day too. Yeah. So where's the fairness? Yeah. So a kid can have the time when they need it, but then you get upset if a teacher takes it. Mm. You know, they're personal, which they're already allowed to do. They get, the people were getting upset. Oh, they're taking a personal day. Well, mm -hmm. that was their mental health day. Yeah. You know, and, and those things are unfortunate and I've told you, I've I've been frustrated more this yeah. year, which is like disheartening because mm -hmm. I I never wanted to become so frustrated in a job that I used to love. Right. And it when you're seeing all this up and down and all around, you kind of second guess yourself. What like what am I am I making an impact or am am I supposed to stay here? Is this going to get any better? Is this going to get worse? Yeah. Do I want to? be here for the long run which i thought i'd retire here and it makes you and it was making me doubt um my whole career and part of my life because i'm like i i really like what i do yeah. but there's so many things that feels like so many obstacles right, <laughs> sorry yeah. excuse me um have arisen and yeah. it and then it makes you like sad yeah. <laughs> like it, it makes it it makes it a little bit tricky and complicated because yeah, you want to do it what's yeah. best for the kids yeah. but then you want what's best for yourselves and i think that's what a lot of teachers were fighting against and yep. teachers left not only because of pay but because of that like yeah. they didn't feel supported there's no substitutes so where contract gives us like a time where we could do paperwork because mm -hmm. that they added more paper more paper instead of being actual educators we yeah. gotta fill out paperwork that doesn't make us better teachers yeah yeah like on, we're so. wasting i'm sorry we're wasting a lot more time on papers than being hands-on and being creative in, yeah. our, in our teaching mm -hmm. and so people are losing that time because they've had to cover colleagues and they're not upset we're not upset with other colleagues yeah. stuff happens in their lives it's just a process it's just a process they're allowed to take a day off mm -hmm. they are, they get sick mm -hmm. but the fact that teachers are covering teachers and we don't get a break mm -hmm. then yep. you're like can i do this again a whole year of the non-stop yeah. and then they come home and they have families and they can't give their all mm. so that's why a lot of teachers are leaving they're still yeah. they're still leaving i want the education system to get better and i'm speaking of public schools i don't know how private works that you have yeah. to pay i'm yeah, not speaking of homeschool that's a whole nother yep. chapter in education but when it comes to the public schools that's what you're speaking of for. i'm speaking that yeah. on that and it affects a lot of low income families mm. because they can't afford private school. They can't afford to stay home. So then there's like a whole generation of kids who are missing out. Yeah. So 
there's wow. a lot of there, things there, to consider there is a lot and we can we can go on and talk about education for a long for a long time because yeah. there's so many aspects uh, right. aspects to it but i'm glad that we were able to touch on on these major points because mm -hmm. i believe they were like good good major points to touch on and hopefully like i said you know that someone who's watching the video can it could spark something and hopefully we could get somewhere with it um <laughs> you, you, yeah you never know and and i don't think many of like many people talk about it or or like in in this form mm -hmm. uh education and then coming from an actual real teacher i'm not talking about just someone who who's just like you know studying or something you know something simple i'm talking about like you know you're like in in the line in that line of work so you mm -hmm. see it every day you know what i mean you're dealing with it and um i want to personally celebrate you for that right that, that that's what we're here so i want to celebrate you <laughs> as a teacher as my not only as my wife but as the teacher thank you and 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 just um um thank you for the work that you're doing because you know you're definitely impacting some you know kids in one way shape or form mm -hmm. and if you were probably another teacher you probably would have quit also but but you've been maintaining and you've been trying to like figure out how i can still like you know stay strong in this in this uh career of yours mm -hmm. which you which you've loved so much and hopefully some changes can come down the line mm -hmm. um but i thank you for the work i thank you for all the teachers the teachers you work with whatever like that you know we 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 thank you for for the the time that you're taking with with kids your son is probably you know you you're probably want somebody's uh, uh uh um student um teacher right from someone who's watching this right now right? <laughs> you're probably a teacher to one of the, the students probably watching this video um but yeah i i thought it was it, it was cool i guess i, I want to finish off the interview with we heard i i heard you speak on you know your life and education what can be a little bit better um how you go about certain stuff but if there was something that you can tell another teacher right like an advice you know uh like an encouragement maybe a teacher that that's maybe at that line of like and their question they may be questioning but mm -hmm. they don't have the support that you have as far as like you know they're probably a single you know ju just a single teacher you know they have no kids yet maybe they're i don't know if they have a husband yet or whatever but like just in general what type of advice would you give to to an educator, a teacher, that's in the system now, and 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 like maybe they haven't been in education for seven or eight years, and this mm -hmm. has probably been their, their first year, mm -hmm. you know? Like, what type of advice would you give them to help them like not quit? Mm. Mm. Just give me a moment. I gotta think about that. Because I've actually thought about this. Like, I'm like, why would anybody, after hearing all this mess, want to go into the education field? Because we ask our high schoolers, you know, like, what do you want to do for a career? And everybody says, I don't want to be a teacher. Mm. And, like, I don't know any kid who wants to. So it's like, like, if they don't want to... <laughs> Who's, who's supposed to do it? Yeah, and we got to keep the, the generations You're always coming, supposed right? to, yeah. yeah, like you're supposed to rise up new leadership. Mm. Um, so it made me scared, to be honest. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Um, so I guess for a first year teacher, I would say what was, like just think about why you got into it first. Mm. You know, like what was your main focus? Because I know it wasn't the pay. <laughs> I know, we nobody ever says that. Yeah. Um, like, why did you want to be a teacher? So, like, kind of go back to, like, your first love, you know? Like, mm. why? Why did I want to do this? Um, two, kind of think, well, can I just grow from it? Before I, you know, automatically quit, can I continue to grow? Um, learning new things, you know? Like, new techniques, um, new ways to approach things. It's, you know, like, so I feel like there's still room to grow in the education system because hopefully we start to evolve, you know, for the better. You know, yeah. things are kind of shaky, but hoping that we get to evolve. Um, also, if you're new or you're struggling, what can you bring to the table? So all of us are gonna complain, you know, life is complicated yeah. and hard sometimes. Everybody complains about their job at some point, but 
instead of complaining, can we turn that complaint into action to be able to maybe fix or help mm. or do something positive? Mm. Um, and I, that's what I asked myself. I was like, okay, I complained today, but what can I do? Can I speak with my principal? Can I go somewhere? Can I do something? Can we gather our teachers? So I think you need to think about that aspect okay. too. Um, and I don't know. I think if if I was single, <laughs> um, though I always say that they're my students, but I always call them my kids. So I feel like if you don't have kids, it's easier to call them your kids, and then like hopefully s make an impact so greatly that even if it's one each year, that keeps you there. Mm, that's good. That's really good. Because yeah. it it matters. Like you're like oh, I. Can't. It feels like you saved somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's so good. And if you weren't there, then who knows if somebody else would have taken that. You impact the generation there. Yeah. One kid is a generation Correct. that you impact. So that's that's really good. So there we have it. We have Evelise Lopez. Um, she she gave it to you. She gave you some information. We, we try to dig a little deep into the education system. And, and why not her, right? Um, so I hope you also take that advice that, that she just gave you now. I hope it blesses you. Um, if you got any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll make sure I'll send oh, them yeah. to her. I'll definitely answer. Um, and she'll, I'll, I'll have her uh, answer the, the questions and whatnot when, when, we, um, um, when we go through the comments or whatnot. But I just want to thank everybody for joining me and my wife in this first episode uh, season two of Coffee Break, which I w I've been so excited to to release. We got some cool interviews on the way, and I just wanted to start it off with with my wife. I love her so much, um, <laughs> and I thought it was a good way to to start the um, the season. So I thank you again. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so right now and hit that little bell icon so you can be notified of new videos that I'm going to be dropping. Uh, in the next weeks, right? Because I got more episodes coming with different people that are doing some really cool things but are hardly getting celebrated. So I want to make sure I do my job this year to just celebrate the people that are doing some amazing, cool things, mm -hmm. bring to the light, you know, through video form. And and you never know, you could, they, they can bless you, you know, and they can be an, an opportunity for you as well if you're in the same, in, in, in the same direction that they're heading. So um, like with every coffee break, never settle with being good when you have been always meant to be great. See you later.